Would you please turn with me this morning in the scriptures to the Old Testament book of 2 Kings, please. 2 Kings in chapter 4. I'd like to read verses 1 through 7 for our text, 2 Kings chapter 4. Now there cried out a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thy house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out unto all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And they all stayed. Then she came and told the man of God and he said, Go sell the oil and pay thy debt. And live thou and thy children of the rest. Here we have a a most wonderful story of a woman, uh, obviously a young widow woman who who lost her husband. Uh, This man was a prophet, uh, probably a part of the school that Elisha taught. Probably one of those that didn't bow to the prophets of Baal. He died and She didn't have anything, no way to make it. Uh, In that time, the the law said that if a a father died and left his family in debt, then he had children, those children could be taken and used to work to pay the creditors. And sometimes those children were never given back. So this woman obviously was fearful that her children would be taken from her. So, so she was really at odds with losing a lot. She was running out of everything. So she cried. She cried to the right person. She cried out to Elisha and said, I, I need you to help me. And she was very honest. And then Elisha said, well, what do you got? And she said, I don't have anything but a little bit of oil. And Elisha said, well, you go get it. And then, then some other things were told that she did. And as she did that, you can see from the text that it, it just kept coming. And she had enough. So I want to talk to you today, and in the title, what I want to try to say is Empty Vessels. And that's all we are, is vessels. God is the potter, and we're the clay, okay? And he, 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 you're a vessel of God. You're a vessel of mercy. That's what you are. And so all the good that you have in you, all the good that that God would have in me, if I say anything good today, it's going to have to be something that God comes, gives me. And I want to just pour it out to you. But you are a vessel of mercy, and and so sometimes it feels like, it seems like, and it's, it's obviously evident that we can run pretty low. You know, Christians can run low. I think right now we're running low. We're running low on hope. We're running low on peace, and the government's running low on solutions. And we're running low on, on our faith, even. And, and so, so the thing I want to try to talk about today is, is, you know, when you're running low, and there's a lot of things that, that we're going to run low of, and because that we are leaky vessels in our humanness. 
And there's a lot of things that, that we're going to run low on. You know, you can run, you, can, you know, you, your husband might run out on you, and your uh, wife may run out on you, or your health may run out, and your money might run out, or your children might run out. But I'm going to tell you right now that God will never run out on you. God will always provide, and it might not be in the way we understand it, but I'm going to tell you, it is the most glorious, joyful peace. Are you running out of joy? Where is your joy? Where is your peace? You know, so what? So what? You can have a lot of material things and still be empty. See, your fullness is not based on, sacri- on, 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 on material things. Because in fullness of Christ, we have everything. It's just that we understand that we, as we cry out to God, where, where is it, God? Where is that blessedness that we once knew? And I think it's time that we really understood that what we need is a personal Pentecost. That we wait upon God. And we say, oh God, send that wind, send that blow, oh God, I'm empty. I have nothing, God, unless you give it to me. And so this woman was desperate. Do not be ashamed to be a beggar before God. I think one of the greatest problems we have in the world is we have too much. And the one thing is, when we think about what the situation we're in right now, when you, when you take God out of a country... When you take God out of a church, when you take God out of government, when you take God out of business, God will shut it down. You might say, well, that's what the virus did. I want you to know that nothing ever comes to your life and mine except it comes through the hand of God. And what God, I believe, is calling all of us to do is to understand that it's vital important that we desperately cry out to Him and that we need Him. For some reason that I can't explain, God causes us to be hungry and He fills us at the same time. Don't you know that Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, He said, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And I believe that that's the one thing we need right now in this country is righteousness. God's Word says, Righteousness exalteth a nation. What does that mean? That means I want to do what God wants me to do. I want to live the way God wants me to live. I don't give a rip about what the world does. I want God and I want to desperately know that He knows that I need Him. And it's alright if you do too. Now when you think about oil, I want you to understand with me, oil in the Scriptures... If you want a definition of it in just country boy terms, it's all that's what God gives us so that we can live the way God wants us to live. You see, God is not only a creator saving God. God sustains the creation. Every day, God keeps this earth just tilted the right way. Every day, God washes every ocean beach completely clean with the tides. Every day, God sends you a beautiful sunset to testify of His glory. Every day, God is sustaining. God does not save you and just put you aside. God sustains you. But sometimes it feels like we're just running on empty. And sometimes we need to check our gauge. Sometimes we need to realize we're vessels. See, all. It's what God gives us to maintain our lives so that we can live the way He does. wants us to. Oil in the Scriptures, you can think about it. It's medicinal in a lot of places. It's used for anointing. Giving God's people special power to do what God's called them to do. It brings unity. Well, oil just, in a practical sense, makes things work better. I'm going to tell you, wherever you are in your life, your life feels empty. You know what? We got to do, let's do a check. We need to check our gaze. You know what? I think we're running low on God. We need more of God. That's what we need. <laughs> and you know, it seems, seems such as that we got to be so academic with life. We got to try to figure things out and we ignore God's word. 
So here Elisha comes to this woman and says, you know, this woman cries out. And the first point I want to make from this text is this. Don't be afraid to cry out when you run out. Do not be afraid to cry out when you run out. It's okay to cry out because God hears your cry. Psalms 81.10, God says, open your mouth wide. I will feel it. How hungry are you for God? How desperate are you for Jesus? Do you really want to live the way God wants you to live? Or do you think you've got to live to please everybody else? You know, Psalms 42, God says there through David, he says, as the heart, that's the deer, panteth after the water brook. So does my heart pan after thee. So what, what the Bible's given us is a, is a wildlife picture of a little deer that's maybe run all day with the dogs. And he finally finds refuge in a little water brook somewhere. And he's panting from the race. Do you ever have any of those kinds where life, you know, just seems to be a rat race? And you get somewhere and finally you just, your heart is beating. And you just, you just need to rest. And, and you're beating for God because you know that's the only thing that's going to suffice you. We need to be aware that we need to continually think about God and our need for Him and be willing to cry out when we run out. And we need to tank up in, in life and God's Word before we won't run out. You know, I, I remember, I don't know why this got to my mind, it's been so long ago, I remember high school football this time of the year, and, and then it was started, and it was hot. I, I never re- walked by a water fountain in the school in the hall, and I didn't take a drink. I didn't, I didn't care if I needed it or not, because I knew what was coming, you hear me? I knew what those wind sprints were going to be like. So you don't ever need to live your life. You never. Do. You get around God's word. You take a. You take a good drink of it. You 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 taste it all the time because you're going to need it later. So I'm going to tell you, friends. You carry this book now. Later on, it's going to carry you. So so cry out uh, when you run out. I've already said. You know. You can have a lot of things on the outside. And not have Jesus on the inside. I'm going to tell you, we serve a full Christ, but his purpose is for empty sinners. Do you hear me? How empty are you? I've seen my wife many, many times uh, take a pot or a pan or a dish out of the cabinet to put food in. And the first thing she does is look at it. See if it's got anything on it. It might have been through the dishwasher, it might have been scrubbed, but she's going to check it. Why? Because she wants it clean. That's the vessel that she's going to use to feed a family. I want to tell you, God is using you and me as vessels to feed a family. So so be a vessel. I told you, and I'm I'm kind of embarrassed to tell you again, I mean, I I got a brand new, a a year or two ago, Sierra truck. I mean, this ain't so fancy, I'm almost ashamed to drive it. You know what? I, I left it there a couple days before I'd even go get it. And you know what? About a week after I drove it, I was driving home one day, and all of a sudden the thing quit over there by Southeast Bullock High School. You know why? It ran out of gas. If you don't believe a $40,000 truck can run out of gas, you don't put fuel in it. You might be the most faithful Christian. You might have been brought up in the church. You might have a, a, all kind of conventions you've been to. You might know the Bible back and forth. I'm going to tell you what. If you don't have God in your heart, you're going to run out. And it's time we need to cry out. It's time we ought to say, oh, God put me in the right place. I'm going to receive your blessings. You know what I think we're missing in our life? We don't, well, God blesses us so much we never get them. I mean, we don't because we're not, we're not empty vessels. 
Our first church I tried to serve over in Manor, Lake Prairie Baptist Church, I'd been there a year or two. One of the members, Brother Carlton Brown, called me one morning and said, Brother Randy, do you want some blueberries? I said, I sure do. I like blueberries. He said, well, if you'll come in the morning, says, I got plenty and they're ripe. I still remember this. I, I pulled up in his house. I mean, here I was, going to be his new pastor, you know, and here's, here's him thinking of me. I'm going to give me some blueberries. I'm thinking, man, he must really like me. You know, I got out of the house. He walks out on the carport, and the first thing he looks at me, and he's kind of a blunt guy, but he says, did you bring anything to get him in? I said, no, sir, I didn't. He kind of looked at me. You know, sometimes we go to church. Sometimes you worship God and you say, well, I didn't get a thing out of that. And you know why? Because lots of times you might not have brought anything to get it in. He had to give me a bucket to pick blueberries out of his own patch. You know what? I think sometimes we don't, we don't underappreciate God's blessings enough to even say, well, what kind of vessel am I? It's not just when you come to church. It's what kind of life you live seven days a week. I don't know if I can pronounce this right. <laughs> Last year... We got this coffee machine maker. Keurig, is that it? Something like that. Well, I got one. And uh, you know what I learned about it? That thing will make coffee without you having a cup under it. Because I, I did it. You know what? I, I put the little cup in there and I press the top, and I turned around to do something else, and all of a sudden I heard splattering everywhere. What it was, it I didn't have the vessel under it. I mean, God pours us out blessings sometimes, and we're not even there. <laughs> you know what? Prayer is not something you do. Prayer is somewhere you go. Prayer is when you go to God as an empty vessel, and you cry out, in your desperation. Prayer is not something that you tiptoe around with God and you try to do something to make you look good or feel good. Prayer is saying, God, I need you. Help me, oh God. Fill me. I'm empty. So the first thing I want to tell you, don't be afraid to cry out when you run out. Secondly, dig out. Use what you got. You know what he told her? Second Kings chapter 4. And Elisha said unto her in verse 2, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thy house? What's Elisha say? You know, he didn't say, well, you mean you don't have anything? Well, I'm going to just give it to you. You know, the world we live in is such a world that you got to say, well, I'm going to just give you something. You can't prop somebody up to make it work. you got to understand, you work with what God's given you. You dig it out. And there's something in your heart. You can feel empty. You can feel as confused as a termite in a yo-yo. But I guarantee you got something in your heart that you can remember. You can remember what God has done for you. You you dig it out. It's kind of like this. You know, uh, when I grew up on the farm, uh, I remember my daddy had a pitcher pump down on the back side of the field where we watered the cows and hogs. So I would go down and pump water in the trough. You know, it's a pitcher pump. It's got a handle on it if you've never seen one. And so the thing is, though, it would lose its prime. So so we had buckets or some kind of cans, and you have water in them, and you take the water, and you leave some water there. Because you know you're coming back, you're going to have to prime it. So so what the same thing with our heart, why? Because air gets in that line. So what you got to do with your life is you go and you prime it. Because see, when God saves you, He gives you His Spirit. That's another symbol, obviously, of oil, the Holy Spirit. So when God saves you, He saves you completely. You don't just have a little bit of God. But so what happens in our experience of that, 
we, we leak out. And life kind of strings us along and problems come around. And, and so we have, a, we have a problem. We have, to, we have to prime that. And we have to go to God and say, I remember God. That you give, give your son, that you spare not your only son. And you promise that you will freely give us everything. You have to prime your life with God's promises. God says in Psalms 34, 10, The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but he says, They that seek the Lord will not lack any good time. And that's true. So, so what I'm trying to tell you is, do you dig it out? You use what you got. You play the hand you're dealt. Don't try to say, well, I wish I had this. I wish my life was like this. I wish my marriage was like this. No, you take your place and you deal with it. Because you are God's. And God is working that out for His glory. Did not you hear what Jennifer Sykes said? That one day her son will be a testimony. Why? Because she's digging out. She's remembering God. Did she not tell us to go and tell how good God is? See, there's something we can dig out that primes our pump so that we can flow and we can dig it out and God gets the glory and we use what we have. That's the same thing Jeremiah said in Lamentations. He lost hope. He lost it. He said, I don't know. And then he said, then I recall to mind, Lamentations 3, 21, 22. Then I recall to mind. <laughs> hey, what he recalled to mind was God's mercy. He said, thy mercy is like the waves of the sea. They're new every morning. You know, what a blessing to see that and bless God in that. You know, a little bit is a lot when God's in it. And that's how it is. You just watch it. That's what Jesus said when he fed 5,000 plus people with two fishes and five loaves. What did he say? What you got? You just bring me what you got. You bring God what you got and he will bless it. And he will multiply it. Remember he says bring it to God. That's what you do. You know, I said the other day somewhere, I don't know if I said it here or not, but we need to be more about appreciation than we are accumulation. You hear me? You need to appreciate what you got. Man, I tell you, I think I'm so selfish sometimes. You'll never be satisfied with the world. I don't care what you got. Only God can fill your heart. But he can do it in such a miraculous way. You know, you, you got you to understand it and bless God in it. You got to dig out and use what you have. You say, well, I don't have much faith. You know, the disciples cried out to God and they said, Lord, increase our faith. They said things like, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. That's okay. God, I really don't know if this is getting any better. You tell God that, okay? Just go to him. See, see, the deal is, it's not your faith anyway. It's the object of your faith. Say, say I might say, well, you know, I've I never been to Wisconsin. Uh, we got some folks here from there. And I was talking to Brother Jason about ice fishing. And that, that, that intrigued me. But how do you, how you walk out on that ice? You know what? I can have faith that I could walk out on the ice. But I could fall in if that ice is too thin. You see, you see, your faith needs to be based, what is the object of your faith? The object of your faith is Jesus. And so when Jesus is who he is and he is, then you're going to have all you need, you're going to have as much as you need, you're going to have when you need it. And you're going to have everything you need to glorify God. You're going to have everything you need for your good. Now you can take that to the bank if you got one. 
That's, that's what God is. He is a filling God. Okay? Dig out. Use what you have. Don't be afraid to cry out when you run out. And then thirdly, shut out the world and fall on Jesus. That's what Elisha told her. When thou art come in, in verse 4, thou shalt shut the door unto thee upon thy son. Shut it out. You know, there's some times we need you to shut out the world. You can, I guarantee you, you can look at the news. I don't care whether it's Fox or CNN. I'm going to tell you, that will run you completely crazy. You need to shut it off. You know, you need to shut out your problems. I know this might not sound right, but you know, there's times you just got to shut out your children. You got to shut out your problems. You got to shut out your family. You got to shut out the church. You got to shut out everything but you and God. I don't know about you, but you know, my, I'm easily distracted. But, but you know, you got to take care of yourself. I don't mean selfish, that's what I'm going to tell you. I remember riding an airplane years ago, and I remember that stewardess standing up there and telling us about these masks that were dropping down, and she said, the first thing you do is, is secure the mask for yourself, and then you deal with your children. See, if you don't have no oil in you, if you don't have God in your life, if, you don't have, if you're not full of the glory of God and God dealing with your life, you can be little, little help to anybody else. See, if you're empty... Where's everybody else? So he shut out the world. And throw yourself on God. That's what God says. I mean, Jesus says. Was it Peter? Cast yourselves upon the Lord and he, because he cares for you. I mean, I mean, shut it out. Shut out your cotton and your peanuts and your cows and, 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 and your health and, and everything. Just, just give it to God. Just take some moments. Actually, that's what God gave us the Sabbath day for. To shut out the world and rest in the completed, finished work of Christ. Okay, what have I said so far? Don't be afraid to cry out when you run out. Dig out, use what you have. Thirdly, shut out the world and fall on Christ. All right, now here's the last one. Pour out your life on others and God will pour the oil in you. See, the deal is, this woman was called to do something. She says, go and get some empty pots. And then when they're full, you pour them, okay? And so when the oil stopped, it's when there were no more vessels. You know, I remember, too, growing up in the country, I remember my mama, sometimes she'd be cooking supper or about ready to, and she'd say, Randy, would you go down to the neighbor's and borrow a cup of flour. I mean, I know we wouldn't hear of something like that. We have so much pride now. You know, we wouldn't dare do that. But I remember that. And, and so we ought not to be ashamed to be beggars to God, but we ought not to be ashamed. No, we were bars. We Everything we have is really lent to us. Even your children are lent to you by God. Everything is God. So as you pour out your life, notice she says, so she went forth from him and she shut the door upon her sons who brought the vessels to her. And she poured out. <laughs> Are you pouring out? You know, sometimes when you drive in a vehicle, it's hard to start, t t turn the steering wheel when it's still. You get it moving a little bit, you can turn it. You know, you feel the nudge. God, if God is nudging you to do something, you need to get at it. Because as you go, you see, as, as you go, you will be strengthened. See, you pour it out, and then, and then when, when she stopped pouring out and there are no more empty vessels, then, then they all stayed. You see, you're not going to run out of God. 
God is eternal and, and He's from the end to the beginning. And the very last chapter, the very last verse of God's Bible, when God ends it all, He says there's grace. Grace is the last word in God's Bible. What about that? You know what that means is whatever's coming in your life, God's going to give you grace sufficient for it. But the deal is when you lose your life, then you're going to find it. We cannot hoard up God's blessings. Israel tried that in the wilderness and God turned the manna into worms. Serve God. And God will pour the oil in you. I remember many of you do this too. I can't go there now, but I remember going to nursing homes and I remember saying to myself, just like you, Lord, help me bless this person. And you go there and you visit with them a few minutes and you get back in your vehicle leaving and what happened? God's blessed you. You're the one that's been blessed. That's what God is doing. You pour your life into somebody else and God will pour his oil into you. You'll be able to live exactly what God has called you to live to please him. That hunger and thirsting after righteousness. God says you're going to be filled. So there'll be none left over. But see, if we're not empty, God's not going to pour us out. He's not. He's not going to waste his grace. His blessings are too precious. I pray that God would empty us all out. I really do. I I hope that God would help us to to cry out when we run out. And and I think we're there. I think we need to really get very serious with God and and our faith and what we believe and trust Him as never before. And I believe there's a time to dig out and use what we got. Because what you're going to find is you got a lot more than you think you ever had. You ever tried to move, say, say you have a house, you know, and you change locations and you tried to move? And you have to box up everything. You probably got more than you thought you had. Certainly more than you needed. But I'm going to tell you just a little bit of faith. God says it's like a mustard seed. You remember that. Use what you got. Because it's enough. I guarantee you. That little bit of love. That's enough. It's enough. Because God is a multiplying God. As we shut out the world. I think we need to do more of that. It takes some discipline. But we just fall on God. We need that reprieve. You know, there's some things we need to quit. I mean, just give up. And I don't mean by that in a cowardly way. I'm talking about we need to just quit doing some things. You know, we need to be like Mary when she sat at Jesus' feet. Just heard his word. I mean, Mary, Martha was doing good things, but she was so busy, and Jesus reprimanded her. He said, Mary has done that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. May the Lord bless us to leave this word full and to pour our lives in the life of others. So many of you are doing that. I just really appreciate you so much. You know, it kind of goes along, you know, if we don't do that, you know, what is it better? What is it saying? I'd rather, you know, rust out. Than, no, I'd rather wear out than rust out. See, oil keeps us going. The Spirit of God, no matter how old we are, God will be faithful. Deuteronomy 33 when he's prophesying the tribe of Ash, he says, your oil, or your foot, will have much oil. I'm paraphrasing that. I know he's talking about oil, and that's prosperity for Asher's tribe. But he said, as thy days are, so shall thy strength be. May the Lord bless you. Keep very close to him. To be an empty vessel. And with the place God has given you, 
because he's pouring them out. He tells us it in the prophecy. He says, if you delight yourself in my house, he says, I will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing so that you won't even be able to contain it. That's why the psalmist says, my cup runneth over. Oh, what a blessing of the joy of God as we rejoice in his great salvation. May the Lord bless you. Would you bow with me? Dear most precious Heavenly Father, we thank you that you would even allow us to be vessels. Some of us, Lord, have some pretty profound cracks in our lives. But you have sealed them. Their scars are still there, but you've sealed them, and they don't leak because of you. Some of us, Lord, are different size vessels and different abilities. But you use us, God. And should you, Lord, be mindful to reach into the cupboard and pull one of us out to serve you, to serve your people, oh, God, we would, we would be ever grateful. Or, Lord, if you just want us to sit there and seemingly do nothing, that's okay, too, because we're yours. We're so thankful, God, to be your vessels. Fill us up. Our mouths are open wide. Our hearts are hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Nothing but Jesus will do. And oh God, we know you've already given us more than we need. We have so much more than we deserve, but we have learned we can't make it on what we deserve. So we cry out for your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.